Sweet. So that's going. That's going. Light any Can you tell Zach that I have to pull back, push my call again? Yeah. Start here. Yeah. 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 Sorry. And then, um, you want to hook up the, <coughs> yeah, that to the mic, and then I guess I'll just click on. I think we have everything. Cameras on, mics are on. And then hook that up. On. I'll, I'll, I'll press the. <laughs> well, uh, in the. You follow me again? I think I'm, yeah, I think we're good. Yeah. Are you guys doing the video as well? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. That, the mics aren't going to interfere with each other? No. All right. Sweet. All right. You said? There you go. All right. Hey, how's it going? I'm well, how are you? Good. Um, I have Gary V here. And um, Gary, for anybody who's not familiar with who you are, do you want to share a little bit about? I'm an entrepreneur who grew up in the wine industry. Uh, started an early YouTube show that gave me a lot of awareness in the wine and then even the business world. Gave a keynote speech in 2008 uh, that caught a lot of fire and was put on TED Talks website, which led to a book that I wrote called Crush It, which started speaking about the entrepreneurship uh, framework that I believe in, what to do during a down economy, which was what we were in in 2009, and the emergence of social media and content marketing. That led to me starting an agency called Gainer Media, uh, which is Mad Men for 2020. We're one of the leading agencies around creating stories on the internet and, um, and prolific investor and massive content producer, podcast, blogs, um, looking to, uh, to put a flag in the ground as an entrepreneur in this generation. Awesome. That's, that's quite a way to introduce yourself. Um, so um, one of the ways I, I got to know you was a few years ago, and one of the things I think that resonated with me is that we're, we have a similar background story. We're both from the former Soviet Union, came here when we were young, and you know, it's kind of same thing. You know, parents were immigrants. I mean, we're still. I guess, I guess we're for zero generations, generation zero too. So, yes. just your story just definitely resonates. Because I was like, I can totally relate to that. Like when you're, when you come here and you have literally like my parents and I came here and we had a hundred dollars in our pocket. So, um, and then you just you're like, hey, I want to become an entrepreneur and and go you know beyond what. So the Soviet Union, of course, had. It also allows you to know, like, when I speak about, like, entitlement or, you know, the grind, I think a lot of people who consume my content see where I am now. For you, growing up, I'm sure, in a very similar childhood or similar nuances, you know, I don't think a lot of people understand how low an immigrant with no money and no language starts in this country and, and more importantly, how little immigrants waste on dumb shit. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people waste money and time on dumb shit. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's just interesting to, to hear about that. Um, and my parents were not really the entrepreneurial type. They were kind of like, you know, the, I guess you have to, say, yeah, 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 like keep that. your head down, stability, get a got good job. And I was like, I don't really want that, that's not me. So I decided that I was gonna go down the entrepreneurial path. But, <laughs> but we all, I guess we all have our paths. We'll have our paths, yeah. Um, so switching gears a little bit, I know that you've been a big proponent of TikTok lately. I have. So tell me what's going on there. I mean, I've, I have a TikTok account. I, I got kind of. It seems like it's like an Instagram, but only with just videos. Is that kind of how you would describe it? <laughs> to me, it reminds me more of Vine, okay. probably than anything else. Um, for me, what I've done for the last, you know, twelve years for sure is continue to beat a drum publicly about where are the opportunities to garner organic reach that quote unquote you don't deserve. Meaning, I, the people listening right now, you start a TikTok account, you post something, and 200,000 people watch it. I, d -Rock, it was this morning, right? Sanam just posted something in our thread. I think somebody left a comment saying their first video on TikTok got 400,000 views. That's what early Twitter did. That's what early Facebook did. That's what early YouTube did. 
most of the people right now know that you don't post a YouTube, you don't tweet a tweet, you don't post a Facebook post, and magically all these people see it. In fact, including Instagram, almost nobody sees it. There are always times where organic reach is popping on a platform because there's more attention on the platform than there is content filling that attention. Currently, the two places that that's happening are TikTok and LinkedIn. So obviously for a lot of people listening and watching, LinkedIn is gonna make more sense. The reason TikTok has, you know, it's funny, I'm saying both of them pretty equally. Mm -hmm. It's that TikTok, for most humans when they hear that, is the place where their 11-year-old daughter or niece is on. So they find it funny, it seems weirder. Um, you should have seen the backlash, or not the backlash, the pushback I got when I was yelling about Facebook in 2000. 10, 11, 12, people still consider that a college social network. Um, so yeah, I, I want to be historically correct. I want to bring the most value as an entrepreneur to entrepreneurs. And the way I know how to do that is to for free put out content that inspires and gives insights to places where there's opportunity. It would be no different than if this was 50 years ago, we're in Denver right now, and I don't know when Boulder popped, whenever. But mm, when did Boulder come for? 40 years? 40 years. Good, before. perfect. I had a good mark on that. <laughs> like 45 to 50 years ago, I was making a video and said, go buy property in Boulder. I think it's next. It's going to work. Here's why. I believe that I'm actually a real estate developer. It's just that I develop consumers' attention, not land. And right now, after a 25-year good record of being right about this a lot, I highly recommend the ones that follow me to take action on LinkedIn and TikTok. TikTok's single most important thing for everybody who's listening is the following. If it goes older, if it adds photos instead of just these videos, if it evolves, no different than the way Instagram evolved. Instagram had to add stories to stop a fast moving Snapchat that was gaining market share. If they evolve and if the demo gets older, I do believe it becomes a very important place for people in 24 and 36 months trying to sell real estate, sneakers, courses, clothes, you know, whatever. And so, but if it doesn't, and this is the most important part, if it doesn't, it already has hundreds of millions of people reacting to it. So some of the behaviors on it inevitably will be things that we as creators and communicators need to add to our repertoire, whether that happens on Instagram because of a feature change or lipstick comes out and becomes the next thing with 30% nuances of TikTok. I became a great creator because I was on social cam. I was on Vine. I was on Peach. I was on all these things that did not go on to win. Even but you were learning. Oh, but I was learning. And by the way, when I was on Vine, I got value out of that. Right now, um, I've, got, I've built a huge audience on TikTok. I've had more people stop me under 15 saying, hey, you're the TikTok guy in the last month. That means, I know that that means that it's working. And once you get the attention, you're building brand. And if TikTok disappears tomorrow, and I, I go take those 16-year-old fans and we are interacting on YouTube podcast and my text platform, uh, 212-931-5731 for everybody who's listening. Um, once you have the attention, you get to siphon it. I, I will leave you with this. This is a long-winded answer. No, no, this is good. I want when, everybody to hear this. When <laughs> Seinfeld's the number one show on TV, you run commercials on it. Nobody cries when Seinfeld then stops airing. That brand goes and runs commercials on Empire or the, the masked singer, whatever. You know, I don't know why people are so obsessed with a social media platform sticking around forever. I don't care if any of them stick around forever. I care about when the attention's on them, am I the best executor of content on it to siphon brand and awareness to keep moving the train along. Mm -hmm. So do you feel, is that, is that how social media platforms really are? It seems like yes. there's like an up and then, yes. and then, I mean, Facebook. But Facebook's had a 15 year run. Facebook's more SNL than it is Punky Brewster. Yeah. Right? I I like Facebook's so. had a long run. I've been marketing successfully on Facebook for over a decade. YouTube's over a decade. You know, Twitter's over a decade. So Vine had a one season and done. You know, Snap had a three, four year season, right? Um, and, and, still, and still has, Snap still has. I was, was going to ask you about Snap. <laughs> I've been past, Snap and Pinterest right now are the two platforms that I'm 
spending a lot of time thinking about because there is a tension, not to the level of Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook, but there is a tension and I want to, you know, I want to execute on my own. I want to eat my own dog food. So I'm trying to get better at those things. So do you think TikTok is going to monetize eventually? Like, of course. The businesses. Okay. <laughs> That's sure. all. I mean, I, lo- you- I love that people are mad at Instagram. Like, in- I saw somebody leave a comment the other day. Instagram is a mean corporation. They're killing organic reach so people can run ads. I'm like, it's free. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's free. You're not mad at the bus for charging you for transportation. You're not mad at cable for billing you each month for cable and internet. You're not mad at the hair you know, dresser charging you. Like, I I don't understand the entitlement of people that use these platforms for free, get awareness, then sell t-shirts, courses, energy drinks. They make their whole livelihoods on it. The platform was free. Yeah, I think people just have have trouble with like, hey, it was free and now I have to actually be like, it's this like change. It's, uh, you know what's funny? And you, you corrected yourself. You don't have to pay. You just get less organic reach. Absolutely. You're, by the way, on the record, if you don't like that Instagram's organic reach is declining, you are more than welcome to be in control of your life. Go and crush TikTok and LinkedIn while it's organic or spend money on Instagram because guess what? Instagram ads are underpriced while we still go through this transition. Yeah. I just don't understand complaining. Well, I think people like, people just get used to it. They're like, oh, Facebook was awesome, like, you know, five, ten years ago, and I was getting everything for free, and my page was getting everything for free. And- Booking Post Malone for $5,000 at your concert was a good deal, too, before he became Post Malone. Buying Amazon stock eight years ago was a good idea. Yeah. You know, things go up. I mean, French wine's about to go up 25% because of tariffs. People are crying at my dad's wine store. I mean, it is what it is. Like, that's the rules. Like, things change. Yeah, absolutely. Things change. Things change. So what do you think? By the way, for everybody who complains, and I'm sorry, I'm just excited about this. Why aren't you willing to work for $7 an hour like you used to at Taco Bell? Why should I be paying you $100,000? Why can't I go to all my employees right now and ask them to go back to what they were getting paid the first day? Things change. People love to blame other things. What about yourself? If you're so sad about Instagram organic reach, why don't you go back to getting paid minimum wage? And I'll give you your organic reach back. <laughs> I guess nobody wants to get paid in no wage I just don't, I don't understand dwelling, complaining on things that you don't control. More importantly, you've got me and many others who are yelling at the top of their lungs on the top of the mountain saying, hey, this opportunity exists, take advantage of it. And then people don't, and then they get upset. I mean, I'm already getting DMs from people like, oh man, I should have posted four times a day on Instagram. Now that I'm getting 60,000 views instead of 230,000, I wish I did. I'm like, I'm like, I have no tears for you. This was the generation where I was yelling that I've already done this three, four times. Don't let this be the fifth time. And they are continuously letting it be the fifth time. And, now they and they'll to- do the same thing on TikTok. <laughs> They're about to do the same to- thing on TikTok. Well, yeah, there's, I mean, are you getting a lot of pushback on TikTok? People are like, no, I don't really want to do it. You, you, You'll, you'll appreciate this. I'm not, I'm not worried about the comment that says I'm a genius and they got 400,000 on the first post or Gary, you're, you're just guessing and you don't know what you're talking about. Screw TikTok. I'm not, I, it doesn't really matter. It, again, I use this analogy a lot. It would be like the home crowd booing me because I'm down seven, nothing at the end of the first quarter. It doesn't matter because it's, it hasn't played out yet. Anybody that executes on what I'm saying will benefit because the data is on my side. Hundreds of millions of people use TikTok. It's the number one app in the app store right now. There's an enormous amount of attention. And do you feel like, I mean, it sounds like it's mostly for the younger generation. So do you think it's just going to age out? I do. Up? I do. Okay. Okay. Instagram evolved out of being for photographers trying to take nice landscaping and sunsets. That's true. Facebook evolved out of being just for college kids. Twitter evolved out of just being for the tech elite in Silicon Valley and nerds talking and one wine guy, you know, (laughs) Tumblr evolved out of being like junior high, you know, anime and like culture, they all evolve. That makes sense. YouTube evolved out of being a place where you ripped copyrighted content from television and put it on there. They all evolve. All of them have evolved. So yes, I do believe it will evolve as well. 
So you're, you're very good at predicting what's going to happen next. What do you think is, besides TikTok, which is already on its way up, it seems like, what do you think is, is You know what's funny? This is a very meta, I appreciate this question because I don't think I'm good at predicting. I think I'm good at observing the current. So people feel like I'm predicting something with TikTok, even though it's the number one app. I'm just a fast mover and executor on what's happening. I will say that voice is very much on my mind. You know, yeah, you do talk a lot about that, yeah, absolutely. So I, I do believe in the Alexa, the Google Home, the Apple Pod, or whatever other home AI voice-driven device. I do believe that that will be the next platform like the iPhone was. So I'm looking forward to learning how to navigate that world. Absolutely. Um, so are you still down to buy the Jets? Is that, is that, you haven't talked about it, I feel like, recently. Is that, I think that's a serendipity of what you're seeing from me. It's always in the air. Uh, I'm also in a very good mood today because uh, this is the Tuesday after our first win of the season against the Cowboys, so that always feels nice. Yeah, I mean, that is oh, – I have two very big goals. One, to create such a legacy that I'm considered one of the great entrepreneurs because I gave the most back to entrepreneurship and I left the legacy of giving uh, without asking in return. So that's my – altruistic, selfless kind of framework. And then my selfish kind of silly, fun, personal business goal is to navigate building a big enough business and businesses that it allows for the kind of capital required to buy the New York Jets. And they're very different goals. They pull from opposite directions, which is very me. And um, they're both very much forever. I want the most people to show up to my funeral because I gave the most without any costs involved, and I want to uh, win a Super Bowl as the owner of the New York Jets. When do you think that's gonna happen? I think based on my, my behavior, and based on the ownership of the Jets' ages, I think 20, 25 years. Oh, to, to buy or to win the Super Bowl? To buy. To buy. And, and then, then I'll need three to five years to, to clean win. up. And, so you don't think they're gonna, between the next 25 years, not gonna have you know, Super Bowl? It's something I think a lot about. Like, do I want it to happen or don't I? Like, I kind of want it to happen because I'm a fan, I'm a true fan, of course. And I really think Sam Darnold is our answer, uh, who's our quarterback, uh, who's in his second year. He's really got it. Um, but I'd be lying if I didn't say that secretly I like the idea of it never happening. And Being then, the underdog. I'm the, you know, the knight in shining armor that came and saved the Jets nation. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, it's really, I'm very excited that you decided to join me and then do this. It's uh, any last things that you want to talk about? Content creation in places where the attention is affordable is a framework that everybody needs to consider. Do you write? Do you do audio? Do you do video? Do you need organic reach like I did with email? Or do you have the money to spend on Instagram ads and pre-roll YouTube and Facebook? That kind of blueprint, it's very basic, but it's incredibly powerful. And if you're not a modern day content creator, you are basically not relevant going forward in my opinion. And everybody has to understand podcasting, blogging, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, everybody. It's as required as taking care of your health, as required as balancing your checkbook. It is a, it is a requirement to success going forward. Creating lots of content. Being hundreds. a communicator, being a communicator. <laughs> Don't you say, is that hundreds, hundreds of, a day? Hundreds a day. Because I think that pushes people to be like, wait a minute, I'm doing two a week. So I want them to see the delta of, I wanted to give them something literal to hold on to, to understand what I'm actually saying. So, awesome. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Yeah, success. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, <laughs> we should probably talk to George or Martin. He wants to talk too. <laughs> jo who's that? The guy who wrote Game of Thrones. Oh, is that true? He's, he, wrote a, he wrote a character in one of his books mm -hmm. called Belichick, who was this wayward leader who cheated and, and I love it. documents. I love it. I need to.